Let's get started on your day one notes over inverse functions. And today's notes deal with primarily linear functions. So we're gonna be finding the inverse of linear functions today. Let's first talk about what an inverse of a function is. The inverse of a function undoes the original function. So what do I mean by that? I mean, let's say that you add six to x to get a function. The inverse of that function would be x minus six. You would subtract six from x. It would undo that original function. Now let's talk about the notation. What do you see when we're dealing with inverse functions? You see this notation right here. There's a little exponent that's a negative one and it's read as f inverse of x. That's how you read that, not the inverse of f of x, it's f inverse of x. Now let's talk about how to algebraically find the inverse of a function. There's several properties of inverse functions that we will eventually get to, but I like to teach this first because I just want you to get really good with the process. What are we doing? So let's say I have this linear function right here, f of x equals 3x minus 9. What I'm going to do, the process is, you replace f of x with y. So I'm going to change this from function notation to an equation, right? f of x is just fancy schmancy for y. So I'm going to write y equals 3x minus 9. And so we might call this, this is written as a function, this is written as an equation, right? It's just semantics. So y equals 3x minus 9. How do we find the inverse of that function? And actually, I'm going to put a little dot right here. I did that in blue. I'm going to change colors here. The next thing we're going to do is switch x and y. So I'm going to replace y with x, and I'm going to replace x with y. That's my next step. And then I'm going to solve for y. So when I do this, when I switch these x and y values, and I solve for y, that will get, I will be undoing this equation. Okay, so now let's solve for y. What do I need to do first? I'm gonna add nine to both sides and I get x plus nine equals three y. And now I need to get y all by itself, so I'm gonna divide by three and every term gets divided by three. And if I wanted to write this equation in slope intercept form, I would write it as one third x plus three. So now how do we write this in function notation? I'm gonna put that right there. In function notation, since the original function is f of x, I would write f inverse of x equals one third x plus three. And that's my answer. So let's move on to some additional examples. Number one, and I'm going to go through this. Number one, if f of x is 4x plus 8, the inverse of that function is, well, my process, I'm going to replace f of x with y. And then now what do I do? I'm going to replace, I'm going to switch the x and y values, right? So y becomes x, x becomes y, and now I'm going to solve for y. So what do I do? Now I'm gonna subtract eight from both sides and I get x minus eight equals four y. To get y all by itself, I now need to divide by four. What gets divided by four? Everything. And now if I want to write it in slope intercept form, remember that's just, there's a one, right? As a coefficient when nothing is there. So I get one fourth x minus eight divided by four is two. And now in function notation, since this is f of x, I would write f inverse of x equals 1 fourth x minus 2. Let's move on to example number 2. I'm going to change colors here. In example number 2, I have g of x equals 2x plus 5. So what's the first step? I'm going to replace g of x with y. So I'm going to write it as an equation not as a function, right? Even though I can still say function, but that's just function notation, right? What do I do now? I switch my x and y. So y becomes x, x becomes y, and now I solve for y. And this helps me undo it, right? So subtract five from both sides, 
and I get x minus 5 equals 2y. And now what do I do? Divide both sides by 2. And then you could leave it like this, x minus 5 over 2. If you were to graph it, that's still a linear function. But if I wanted to write it in slope-intercept form, that's 1 half x minus 5 over 2. And then if I want to write this in function notation, because my original function is g of x, my inverse function is g inverse of x equals 1 half x minus 5 over 2. And let's move on to our last example on this page. And that's h of x equals 3 fourths x minus 3 over 2. So what's my first step? My first step when I want to find the inverse of this linear function is I'm going to write or I'm going to write it as an equation. So replace h of x with y equals 3 fourths x minus 3 over 2. And now switch my x and y values. So y becomes x and x becomes y. And now what do I do? Now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to add 3 over 2 to both sides. That removes it from this side. And then I'm going to add it to this side. And I get x plus 3 over 2 equals 3 fourths times y. Now, if I want to uh, get y all by itself, how do I get rid of that fraction? I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 over 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Everything gets multiplied by 4 over 3. So watch what happens. So on the right side of this equation, 3 fourths times 4 thirds, those cancel, and I'm left with y equals. This on the left side, I need to distribute this 4 thirds into every term on the inside of the parentheses. So I get 4 thirds x plus, well, let's figure out what 4 thirds times 3 over 2 is. I'll do that off to the side over here. 4 thirds times 3 over 2, multiplying fractions ain't no problem. It's the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So remember, I can actually pre-simplify is what I call it. I can simplify here, write 3 and 3, common factor is 3. I can cancel those. 4 and 2, common factor, 2. Uh, so this becomes 2 over 1, right? So how did I simplify that? If you need something, um, how to review these types of um, how to multiply fractions, I'll put a little card in the upper right-hand corner and um, you can click on that and hopefully get a little refresher of how to multiply fractions. Um, if you're able to use your calculator, you can also use your calculator, but um, you end up getting two. Two over one is just two, and there's your answer. Y equals four thirds X plus two. So now how do you write it in function notation? Your original function is H of X. So your inverse function is gonna be H inverse of X equals four thirds X plus two. All right, let's move on to the next page, properties of an inverse function. So we just talked about how to find the inverse of a function algebraically. And what did we do? We switched the X and Y values. All right, so when we switch the X and Y variables in an equation, we're finding the inverse of a function. When this happens, what happens to the function? All the X and Y values switch which means if you were to graph on the coordinate plane, all of your X and Y values switch. They just swap places, which means the domain, which are your set of all X values, and the range for your set, which is your set of all Y values for the function switch as well. Okay, let's actually um, go through a problem that might, that would demonstrate this. And what I have for you are the functions F of X and F inverse of X. So imagine we've already algebraically found the inverse of this function, which if I were to replace the X and Y in my equation and solve for Y, I would get this function right here. But what I wanna talk about are some properties of inverse functions. One of the properties is if I were to switch the X and Y values when I solve 
for or what I saw for the inverse, like what we just did on the previous examples, when I do that, what happens is all of my X and Y coordinates switch. Meaning if the point negative four, negative 12 is a point in my original function, the point negative 12, negative four is going to be a point on my inverse function. The X and Y values switch. So for example, negative three, negative six, and I'm writing it like as an ordered pair with my parentheses, switch places and I get negative six, negative three. 0, negative 2, 6, negative 1, 12, 0. These are all points that are on the inverse function. So now what I want you to do is take a few moments and pause the video if you want. And I'm actually going to graph these two lines on this coordinate plane. And I'm going to connect them and then I'm going to come back. So pause the video and graph these two lines on the coordinate plane provided. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to draw this dotted line. This is the equation for this dotted line is y equals x, right? My slope is just 1, up 1, over 1. It passes through the origin. It's just that. So what do you see about these two lines? What observations can you make? If I have the point let's see, in this function, negative 3, negative 6, which is right here, that's negative 3, negative 6, then the point negative 6, negative 3 is right here. Those are mirror images, or mirror, this whole line is a mirror image across the line y equals x. Every single point is a mirror image, right? The entire line is a reflection across the line y equals x. So the inverse is a reflection across the line y equals x. And that's what happens. You may recall from geometry, like those that mapping notation, where if I reflect the line across y equals x, what happens? My x values become my y values, and my y values become my x values. They switch places. So you might recall that from reflections in geometry. Typically, my students don't really recall that, but that's what it looked like in geometry. You had to do that kind of mapping notation. This is what it looks like in algebra. When your x and y values switch places, your x and y values switch places in your equation. Your x and y values switch places in your table, right, because of, because of that. And then when you graph it, you can see your X and Y values switch places. And because of that, it's a reflection across the line Y equals X. You might also see that your slopes are reciprocals, right? So if I have six over one being this slope, flip it, one over six is the slope of my inverse function. So let's do another example. In this example, it says, find the inverse of the function f of x equals 1 half x plus 3 algebraically. Complete the table of values in the function, then switch the x and y coordinates to fill in the table for the inverse of f and graph both functions on the coordinate plane. Or f inverse, I should say. I didn't even say that right. f inverse, okay? f inverse of x, f inverse. You might see it written um, this way right here or this way up here you'll see it written both ways. So we need to find the inverse of this function algebraically. That's our first step. So here's the function, f of x equals 1 half x plus three. So what do I do first? I replace f of x with y, 1 half x plus three. What's the next step? Switch the x and y. So y becomes x, x becomes y. And now I'm gonna solve for y. What do I do first? subtract 3 from both sides, and I get x minus 3 equals 1 half y. And I'm going to switch colors here. How do I get rid of that 1 half? 
multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1, which is 2. Everything over here gets multiplied by 2, and I get 2x minus 6 equals y. Thus, the inverse function is inverse or f inverse of x equals 2x minus 6. So what we're going to do now is, and I'm going to go back to this original color, in this first table of values, I'm going to fill in the table for my original function with just these values that we've just been given, right? So if I plug in negative 4 for x, negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. When I plug in negative 2 for x, negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. When I plug in 0, I get 3. When I plug in 2, I get 4. When I plug in 4 for x, 4 times 1 half is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. So there's my table of values for this original function. And it, we'll be graphing these in just a second. But what I want you to do is now show that your x and y values switch. If I just gave you this table of values, could you find the table of values for the inverse function? Sure, just switch your x and y values. So in this first um, row right here, my x value is going to be 1 and my y value is going to be negative 4. And I can go on like that for the rest of the points in this table. Now, you may recall there's an infinite number of points on both of these lines, um, but we're just we're just showing you a few of these points, right? Just five on each line. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and graph these two lines on your coordinate plane. Draw your line y equals x, and we can go ahead and do that. Here's the line y equals x because we're going to model that because these are inverse functions, they are going to be reflections across the line y equals x. Go ahead and do that now. Graph these two lines on the coordinate plane, and as you can see, you can visually see now that each of the original function and its inverse are reflections across the line y equals x, right? So what did we do today? We solved for, a, for the inverse of a function algebraically. When we did that, we switched the x and y variables in our equation and we solved for y. That's how we solve for the inverse of a function algebraically. What else did we explore? We explored the fact that when we switch the x and y values in an equation, all of our x and y values switch in our table of values, in our lines, right? Our x and y values physically switch places. So then when we graphed, I don't know why I drew arrows like that. Then when we graphed on the coordinate plane, you can see that when I have x and y values that switch, so my x and y variables switch places, y becomes x, x becomes y, a reflection across the line y equals x occurs. So we can see it in our table of values. We can see it, we can visually see it when it's graphed on a coordinate plane. So if I had a function that was not a mirror image across um, the line y equals x, they would not be inverse functions. Um, one of the things that I also like to point out are the intercepts. The intercept of this line right here is 0, 3. That's the y-intercept, which means the x-intercept of the inverse function is going to be right here, which is 3, 0. And then down here, the y-intercept is 0, negative 6. Um, is that correct? 0, 1, 2, yes, negative 6, which means the x-intercept in this function right here is going to be negative 6, 0. So the intercepts switch places, right? That concludes your day one notes over inverse functions. I hope it was helpful.